Okay, we are back, and in this video, we're going to solve the problem. Well, let's not even say the problem. Let's just show the problem. If I play the game right now, I can walk right through our tent, and that's an issue. I can walk right through these benches, which is maybe slightly less of an issue, but I still consider it an issue. And if we fly out here to where our little our tunnel mine thingy is... then we can pass right through it too and that's problematic I'd like us to be able to block all that sort of thing off so that we can just pass right through it and the way we're gonna do that is by setting up collisions now I'm gonna start off over here in our little tunnel area now there's a lot of different ways that you can add collisions uh, you can add them specifically to objects as a component we can bring in a separate uh, piece of geometry that we can use as a collider and that's what we're going to do in the case of the tunnel so here inside the hierarchy view I'm gonna click on our tunnel and we're gonna to go to create and I'm going to make a cube now this is gonna drop a cube in here where I'm actually looking and that's I don't want to move it that far so uh, let's just hit control Z and I'll navigate the view to over here right where my tunnel is now let's do that again let's go to create cube and there we go. Now our cube is currently sitting pretty much right in the middle of everything. Uh, now let's make sure we can find the cube. Here it is inside of our hierarchy view. I want to parent this to the tunnel object. Now this will throw up a little bit of a warning, but if I drag the cube right here on top of tunnel, we get our warning that we're about to lose the connection to the original prefab, which is fine, no problem. And now it's a part of the entire tunnel object. Now in doing that, we get a, a little bit of a bonus in that we can now position this relative to the tunnel. So for instance, if I take up here in this transform in the inspector, the very top we have position X, Y, and Z. And if I set all of these to zero, so I say zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. Now the cube is right there at the location of the pivot point of this object, which is pretty handy. So if you ever need to center one object to another's pivot, that's certainly one way to go about it. You just parent them and then uh, set the transforms over to zero. Now, I'm going to make this block take up the entire area inside the fence and then a little bit above it too so that nobody can you know, jump over the fence if they try to get really clever. So I'll drag this up into the air. Now I'm using the move gizmo, which you can use by tapping the W key if you don't already see it. Then I'm gonna get the scale gizmo out by hitting the R key. Now this allows us to scale in the x-axis, which is the red axis. We can just drag that out until it's about as wide as both pieces of the fence. So we just push it out, about like so. Maybe pull it back in just a tad. And it's it's not perfectly even, but it's pretty close. We can go back to move with W and just kind of slide it over a little bit to center it up. Now let's go back to scale with the R key. And we'll scale this forward in Z and make it nice and big. And we'll, we'll sink it all the way into the cliff. So now we'll just kind of slide this back a little bit. And it's okay if it hangs over a little. We won't be able to see it when all's said and done anyway. Now, let's go back to scale, and we'll scale up Y. And there we go. And I'll just kind of sink this down a little bit. And let's go just a, a little bit higher. And we'll slide that back up. So I'm doing a lot of jumping between W and R for scale. Now, this object now encapsulates our entire area and if we take a look at this box this cube as a matter of fact I'm gonna change its name let's come over here and press F2 and we'll call this tunnel collider which should now be at the bottom of our list or close to it now, if we take a look at our tunnel collider it has the standard transform information which it needs to have a location rotation scale it has the cube, which is our mesh filter, so that we know this is actually a cube object. It has the box collider, which we need because that's how we're going to stop the player from passing through. But it has another component that came in by default that we don't need, being the mesh renderer. Now, what does the mesh renderer do? Well, the mesh renderer is actually the component that's responsible for drawing the geometry that you see when it renders. It's actually the... the uh, well, the mesh renderer, it renders the mesh. <laughs> it renders the mesh, that's right. It is the mesh renderer, and so it renders the mesh. Now, we don't need this mesh to render. We're basically building an invisible force field that will stop our player from being able to walk through the fence. 
So let's right click. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button on our mesh renderer and then click on remove component. And suddenly that just disappears. So now if I deselect it, we don't even see it anymore. But let's test things out. Let's go ahead and just hit play and I'll use my super fast hovercraft mode to fly out there as quickly as my little capsule feet can carry me. And thunk! We can't go any further. So we actually have something that is stopping us. That fence actually does seem to be impeding our progress, which is exactly what we want. So that takes care of the first part of our problem. Now let's go back to the camp. Now to flash over there, I'm going to click on the camp in the hierarchy and then tap the F key in the viewport, and that'll fly us over real nice and quick. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for the benches, but I'll do it a little more quickly. Can we try a different way? If you like. Uh, uh, let's just demonstrate a, a different way you can do it. Select one of the benches like mm -hmm. you got, go to Component, mm -hmm. go to Physics, mm -hmm. and go Box Collider. Bink! And there we go. And we immediately have a Box Collider. Now, the interesting thing about doing this is it gets to be a little bit tricky to get it positioned exactly mm -hmm. right. Uh, we have a size, we have a center, and we can slide this around, but what are we missing? Well, no rotation. Right. We don't have any rotation. So your object has to be rotated to orient within that. Right. And we don't, I don't really want to do that. Mm -hmm. So, but but we will we could make use of that. Uh, now, one thing we could have done, we probably could have used a box collider over on the tunnel mm -hmm. uh, because we hadn't rotated that at all. Because this object, because this bench has a little bit of an odd rotation that is not really a part of the pivot. It's just the vertices themselves are kind of off kilter oh, by I a little. Uh, then our box collider doesn't line up exactly. So what I'm going to do is nuke that back out. But it is very cool that if you have an object that was designed so that it automatically orients with uh, with the world axes, it hasn't been rotated uh, at a low level like that, then you can just use a box collider. It's a real easy way to do what we're trying to do. Right, and I didn't realize that with that object is the actual transform. And that's great. It's st it still shows another way to add collisions. And we'll actually take a look at doing that uh, with the tent here in just a few moments. But for now, let's go ahead and remove that component back out. And because I want to be able to rotate and fit something pretty much exactly to our bench, then, well, now we need to create a separate object. So we'll just go underneath our camp object. Let's go to create and make another cube. So this is pretty much exactly what we did a second ago. We will parent this into the camp. And let's call this, I think we had bench 2 selected. Yes, we did. Just making sure. So let's call this bench 2 collider. Now, we can take this and parent it directly to Bench 2, as we did before, and we can take its position, but watch this. This is a little bit on the problematic side. If we just zero everything out, look where we end up. We end up in the fire, mm -hmm. and that's because the pivot for the bench was actually in the fire as well, so that doesn't help us as much as it did before, but we can take the Y rotation and set that to zero, and now everything actually works out okay. I mean, it's not positionally oriented, but in terms of rotation, the two are lined up. So now all we have to do is grab our move tool, again with W. We'll slide this back. Okay, so it's a little off. <laughs> all right, I thought I could pull it off, but that's all right. We'll, st we'll still line it up uh, as close as we can from here. Let's just hit R, and we'll scale this out, get it nice and long. Take a look from the side and just line this up. Now there's a couple of different things we could do here. I'm, I'm going to show off real quick. Uh, let's hold down the V key, and what this will do is activate vertex snapping. And while you're holding down V, you can mouse over the various vertices of the selected object, and you'll see your move gizmo move along with it. Let's pick on this vertex up here in the, the right co uh, corner, and now as I drag the move tool, we are snapping to any of the vertices of the selected object. So we can select corner and snap directly to the corner. It's a nice way to get the elevation of our benches, or the, the elevation of our collider to be at the same altitude as our bench. So it's a neat little trick, and that's using uh, vertex snapping, which is something we'll talk a little bit more about in detail uh, later on in another video. But technically, I think you've just seen all of the, <laughs> the hardcore parts of it. So we'll rotate this. Now, I just hit the E key to grab the rotate tool, and then rotate it around in the Y axis just a little bit to line that up. W to go back to the move tool, line up in this direction, slide this way a little bit, 
and then stretch that out like so. And maybe scale back in just a tad. So now we have a collider set up for that. And the same thing we had a second ago, we don't need our mesh renderer component as Lee explained. So let's just go ahead and remove that component. And now we have a collider set up here as well. Now, what I'm gonna do is just hit Control D, grab my move tool, and now you'll see we have two bench two colliders. Let's hold down V one more time and we'll mouse over, let's make sure we have our collider selected. And, well. It only works with meshes. It does only work with meshes. And because there's no mesh renderer, we're not actually getting the individual vertices selected. Now we can still snap the pivot point, but that's not so useful. So what I'll do is I'll just undo back to where it was. We won't worry about the V key. And I'll drag this over with in the z-axis, drag it over in x as well, and just kind of center it up. So we can look at our bench from above and make that a little easier. Then hit E to grab the rotate tool and spin this around. Go back to the move tool with W and, and just tweak it out. And I think that'll work just fine. So now let's test this out. We'll go ahead and hit play. And boom, up. Oh. The benches now stop our progress, but we can jump and get on top of them. Now, when I jump, I move really fast in the air, so it gets to be a little tricky to land directly on one. I guess unless I go long ways. And there we go. So now you can actually stand on the benches as well. Now, that of course isn't all. We still have the problem of our holographic tent, so let's stop playing real quick. Now, what were you saying earlier? We used a box collider component, yeah? Mm -hmm. So let's try that again. Uh, we'll select our tent and we'll go under component and come down to physics and drop on a box collider. And that's kind of nice. I mean, that's a pretty good way to start. The cool thing is it automatically surrounds the bounding box, the object, which can be really useful for a lot of different things. Uh, but if we hit play, we can give this a try. I mean, really, in the grand scheme, it's not horrible. But it might feel a little weird in that you can get closer to the tent in some directions like here. I'm, I suddenly can't get any closer. Mm -hmm. It's like there's a force field of some kind. So the problem is that a box is not probably the best possible shape to do this kind of thing. Right. And it's not the only one. There are other shapes that we can use. Absolutely. So let's take our box collider and we'll remove it. And let's take a look at some of the others. So we'll go back to component, physics, and let's try... Oh, let's see. We have a sphere collider. That might work. Uh, it's a little bit closer approximation of the tent. And we could probably take the sphere, and of course we can move the collider independently by a little bit. So we can take the center here in the properties and take its Y and bring it down a little. And this might work just fine. And that seems to be working okay. See, the trick is, is with a collider... The more complex the shape of the collider, the more mathematics are involved for calculating a collision. That's true. So what you want to do is you want to get the simplest shape that you can possibly get away with, with a sphere being the fastest, a box collider a little bit uh, more expensive, a capsule collider being even uh, a little bit more expensive, and last ditch is what is called a mesh collider. And this is a really strong tent because I can stand on top of it. <laughs> And you're absolutely right. The mesh collider is the most expensive, but we haven't even seen the mesh collider yet. So sure. let's at least take a look at that. Yeah. So I will once again right click on the sphere collider. We'll remove it. Now, as you've seen, we have some other colliders as well. We have wheel colliders and capsule colliders. Let's just grab a mesh collider. And if we do this, we don't see a collision object appear like we have before. That's because the vertices of the polygon mesh itself are used. It's kind of like the model itself. You can think of it as it's kind of like a separate model is duplicated out of it, and we're using that for the collision. So now, just by adding a mesh collider, we can hit play, and now the tent itself stops us. Now this can get really expensive, and if you have a really complicated model, you really don't want to do this if you don't have to. Fortunately, this uh, mesh is fairly simple, mm -hmm. and so it's really not that big of a deal to use, and does allow us to show a bunch of different types of colliders. 
But now we've taken care of our problem. We have our benches that now stop us. We have our tent that stops us. I didn't worry about the campfire. We'll deal with that at another time. And, of course, our chain link fence now stops us. So we have all of our collision objects in place, and that's everything I wanted to show. Is there anything you want to mention before we head out? There is one thing I would like to show. Mm -hmm. If you can delete the uh, mesh collider on the tent. Sure thing. Well, let's go ahead and stop playing real quick, and then we'll nuke that out. And then remove the uh, two colliders that you put on the benches. Oh, but I like those well, colliders. Well, turn them on. Actually, before I do that, and this is something I overlooked only because I was so excited. I was moving it over. Yeah, I duplicated this guy. Uh, and what I need to do is make sure that he's actually named Bench 1 Collider. And then we're going to make sure he's parented to Bench 1. So each bench has its own collider. Correct. Is that what you were going to show? No, actually okay. I was going to go um, one place further. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, actually go ahead and um, delete out the camp because we've broken okay. the whole thing. Bring in a new copy of the camp. Mm -hmm. And let me go ahead and just kind of spin it around, get it close to where it was. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just kind of showing a demo right. level anyway. Right. Now, this one's a little bit more expensive, but it's a trick that you can do if you've got some objects and you don't want to have to hand put in all the colliders. Mm -hmm. So if you go under the project window and you go to camp. Okay. And in the inspector, underneath uh, the mesh compression, there's one that says generate colliders. Ooh, generate colliders. So if you check that. And make sure we go down and hit apply. And hit apply. Your prefab is now going to have colliders attached to each and every mesh. Awesome. So we should be able to just try this out. Now, these are all mesh colliders, yeah? Correct. Gotcha. It, it's more expensive, but if you've got a very complex um, scene that you're bringing in, mm -hmm. it's a very quick way to get colliders on everything really awesome. fast. Now, we really don't need any colliders on our campfire, so we can go ahead and leave this, because again, this is really just uh, mostly about academics anyway. So let's come down. Well, we could do this in the uh, the actual project version, in the original prefab itself. We've already got generate colliders on. Okay, so we can, I really wouldn't want to change things here, uh, though I suppose we could. Uh, let's see. Let's come down to the fire pit, and let's just pull off this mesh collider. So let's we'll right-click, remove component, and it's not going to let No, me. not with the auto. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, we can remove it. We should be able to remove it here, though. Well, there's a trick that you can do, but it gets involved with creating a prefab, and we'll, we'll deal with that later. Yeah, we'll deal with that later, but I, I should be able to remove it just fine over here in the hierarchy view. So we'll go ahead and select the fire pit, right-click, remove component. This will break our connection between the two, but it is kind of a nice way that we can set up uh, having collision objects created for us for something that is, you know, relatively complex that we know we needed to put mesh colliders on everything anyway. And that's a great trick. So thanks for showing that. But I think with that, that really is going to wrap up this video. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot.